Hello Father's Faithful. Welcome to Sunday School this week. I would like for you to remember the following people when you pray. Remember Eddie, remember Zeb, remember Don and Dolores, remember Martha's grandson and his family. They've been sick this week. Remember Martha and Larry and another Martha. I know you have people on your hearts this week and I know that the Lord answers our prayers, so we want to pray for healing and comfort and peace for these people. I'd like to talk to you about David again. Last week we talked about David inquiring of the Lord, and I want to go back a little bit farther in the book of 1 Samuel and talk about the time when David was chosen to be the king by Samuel the prophet. We're going to read from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, and I want to read verse 7 for you. The whole passage is verses 1 through 13, if you have time to read that, but I'm going to read verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You know, Samuel looked over all seven of David's brothers as they passed by when the Lord told him to anoint a king for Israel. And none of those brothers were the one that the Lord was choosing to be king. And what's sad about this account is that initially David wasn't even considered by Jesse, his father. It was only after Samuel asked if there were any other brothers to be considered that Jesse said, why, well, yes, the youngest one is out in the fields. He is tending the sheep. And that is the one that God anointed to be king. You know, others may not have considered you either. They may not know you. They may not remember you. But God knows you. He knows how to bring you in from that field where you're laboring just to the right place at the right time with the right people. God will honor you publicly for serving Him privately. God will choose you. He will anoint you. He will appoint you for whatever His purpose is for your life. David was the eighth son presented to Samuel, the very last one. The Bible says that the last shall be first. God gave David a new beginning and brought him out of that field and placed him to a position of recognition. He brought him from the back to the front. And you know, he can do the same for you and me. The Lord knows exactly how to bring you out of where you are to the place that he has for you. So keep on serving, keep on being faithful, and when the time is right, he will promote you. He knows your faithfulness, he knows your potential, and he will bring his plans for your life to pass. In other words, God can call anyone to do anything at any time, and that includes you and me. Take Amos, for example. He was an unlikely choice for a prophet. Amos 1.1 introduces Amos by saying this, The words of Amos, who was among the sheep herders from Tekoa, which he envisioned, envisions concerning Israel. And later in chapter 7, we find that Amos didn't feel very qualified to be the prophet that he had been called to be. Amos 7.14 and 15 says this, then Amos replied to Amaziah, I am not a prophet, nor am I a son of a prophet, for I am a herdsman and a grower of sycamore figs. But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. So in spite of his lack of confidence, God chose Amos. And he called him to declare his message to the people of Israel and to Judah. You know, 
Just like David, just like Amos, the Lord has a plan and a purpose for our lives. And even though we may not think we have the talent, we may not think we have the education, the experience, the family legacy to accomplish certain tasks, with God, there is no end to what we can do. Rick Warren wrote in his book, The Purpose Driven Church, that God uses different kinds of people to reach different kinds of people. Well, I can testify to that. There were people who came to our Sunday school class and our church who would have never come had I invited them. They didn't know me and I had nothing in common with them necessarily, but there were other people in our church and in our Sunday school class who invited them and because of what they had in common with them, they were able to reach them and not only reach them to come to church, but to reach them for the Lord. The Lord uses all of us different people for different purposes. I think I say this every single week, but I thought about this because I heard a song recently that was sung by my brother many, many years ago. In fact, I shared it on Facebook, but it is a song called Shepherd Boy. And after I read my column, I'd like to play that Shepherd Boy song sung by my brother Keith when he was 31 years old. And I think that it sums up the message of this lesson today. You may be just a shepherd boy in your mind, but the Lord may see a king. Let me read my column first, and then we'll play the song. Babies remind us of the boys who will become men. Do you want to hold him, Aunt Donna? My eyes turn from the precious baby boy to the beautiful young mother. Not yet, I replied. The baby was resting peacefully in the hospital bassinet, and I knew that was the right answer. But staring at that tiny baby who had just made me a great aunt, my husband told our niece that he already knew he was a great uncle, stirred up feelings that I hadn't had in a long time. When I look at my own three sons, I cannot believe how quickly time has passed. Helping make dinosaurs out of pipe cleaners and painting faces has turned into writing checks for college tuition. Having the boys all underfoot at the same time has turned into wondering where in the world they are. Just last month, I made a comment to my youngest son about one of his friends. I sure am glad I'm not his mother, I had said. The boy was traveling with a band and had a show scheduled in Florida when a tropical storm scheduled a visit at the same time. I would worry myself sick if I was his mother, I began. But before I could finish my sentence, I stopped myself. What in the world was I talking about? I had a boy living in Ecuador at that very minute, and another boy who had just flown to Los Angeles to visit a friend and was now traipsing all over Hollywood and Venice Beach, planning to make a road trip to Las Vegas before flying home. Me? Worried about a little tropical storm? I must be kidding. A few days after visiting the new baby in our family, we went to see our seven-year-old nephew play sea ball. Wouldn't you know it, there was another baby. It was dusty at the ball field and the baby, dressed only in a diaper, was dirty from the tips of his toes to the top of his curly blonde head. And from the back, he was my baby boy. I missed half the first inning of my nephew's game because I couldn't take my eyes off the baby. And I remembered how I longed to hold my babies one more time, to feel their little heartbeats next to mine, to have those tiny hands on my cheeks, to feel completely wanted and needed. As I shifted my focus back to the game, I cheered as my nephew got another runner out on first base. But I couldn't help but notice the chubby little boy in the outfield and in my mind, I remembered another little boy from a long time ago, and I cheered for that little boy too. Probably as loud as his own mother, I cheered. When the boys were small, one of our family's favorite passages of scripture was Psalm 1. Sometimes it was hard to settle three little sons down, enough to read a whole chapter from the Bible, but they could usually make it through this one without too much fuss. In fact, by the time the boys were in middle school, they could all three pretty much say the whole psalm without even looking at the words. 
Blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of mockers, for his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on this law does he meditate day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. Yes, I do love the babies, and I love the memories of my own babies. But that season is long past in our family, at least until the grandchildren come along. But for today, I'm looking at young men. So the other night, I sat two of my boys down who are at home right now and told them what I want for them, what I am praying for in their lives. I told them that I wanted them to be God's mighty men. I want them to be strong in the spirit, men who stand up for righteousness and integrity. I want them to be responsible family men and leaders in the church. I want them to live lives without compromise and faithfully point the way for others who need to be led in the right direction. I want them to glorify God in every word they say and in everything they do. One listened. One may not have heard a word I said yet. One will probably have to read my prayer for his life in an email. But I know the promise that the Lord has made to me and our family. I trust that one day the Lord will lead the way for the mighty men inside of those boys of mine to make a difference in the lives of one of those new babies. And who knows, maybe those babies will make a difference in our world. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your promises. We thank you for your word. Lord, we pray for this long list of people whose names we called and those who were in our hearts that we didn't say out loud. But Lord, I pray that you would bring healing to their bodies and give them strength. Father, please forgive us for our sins. Bless our church, our church family, and our pastor and his family. Lord, we pray that you would just draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now listen to my brother Keith sing Shepherd Boy. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I hope you remember that God can make a king out of you. One by one, Jesse's sons stood before the prophet. The father knew a king would soon be found. And each one passed, except the last. No one thought to call him. Surely he would never wear a crown. But when others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king. Even though your life seems filled with ordinary things, in just a moment, he can touch you. And everything will change When others see a shepherd boy God may see a king One by one problems come Get shattered. Sometimes it's hard to understand. Things like chance and circumstance, they don't really matter. Our Father holds tomorrow in His hands. And Shepherd boy, God may see a king, even though your life seems filled with ordinary things.
just a moment He can touch you And everything will change When others see a shepherd boy God may see a king Well, he was 